Welcome to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace the screen on the Samsung Tab A7 Lite SMT225. To begin with, turn the device off, although on this device, I can't seem to see the screen to power the device off. So we'll disconnect the battery when we get to it. Next, remove the memory card tray or SIM card tray and store that safely for later. This area here is a weak spot in the back cover, so take a guitar pick and create a small gap between the, the black front screen and the back cover. You should be able to push the pick in a couple of millimeters and then begin popping off the back cover by running it down the edge of the device. You do have to use a little bit of force to get this off, but continue working the pick around all four edges of the device. The corners can be a little bit tricky, but once you've worked your way all the way around, the back cover should just come away from the device very easily. Next, remove the six black crosshead screws that secure down this shield on the logic board. Take some tweezers now and carefully lift the shield and store it safely for reinstallation later. You can now isolate power from the device by disconnecting the battery with a plastic spudger. Disconnect these other two flex cables from the logic board, then finally Get underneath this coaxial cable to disconnect that too. There are five more crosshead screws securing down the motherboard on this model. Remove those and store them safely for later. This will now allow the logic board to be removed from the chassis. Starting in the top right corner of the motherboard, pry up with the spudger to lift out the logic board. Moving on now to this small speaker at the top of the device, Carefully pry underneath it with some tweezers to remove it from the chassis. To remove the volume button flex on the side of the device, as well as the microphone, apply a small amount of heat with a heat gun or hairdryer to soften the adhesive. Then gently pry the volume buttons away using some sharp tweezers, followed by the microphone, then finally the rest of the flex cable. This part is quite fragile, so be careful when removing it. Moving on now to the bottom of the device, there are 11 black crosshead screws securing down the loudspeaker and the plastic cover for the subboard. Remove all 11 screws and then using your tweezers, carefully lift up the plastic cover. This should lift out quite easily once you've pried it out on the right hand side. Disconnect the flex cable from the top of the subboard. Then, using your tweezers again, begin lifting the subboard from the chassis. It is stuck down a little bit, but comes out quite easily with a little bit of prying. I've deliberately left this coaxial cable attached. Just pull that out of the small connectors, holding that down, ready for installation into the new chassis. The battery here is stuck down by these two tabs. These should peel away and pull out from underneath the battery. Peel back the tape under the black covers and then keeping as low as possible, carefully pull the tape, wiggling it around a little bit at the same time to release the tape. I was surprised how easy this came out because comparing it to iPhone batteries is usually a lot more difficult than that. That's the battery free now, and it looks like everything's ready to scrap this chassis and get our new display. And as you can see, it comes with the tape for the battery to stick down to, all the flex cables, as well as the mid-frame chassis for the new screen. I will link in the description below where to get this part, but let's begin by reinstalling the battery. Remove the blue plastic film from the top of the battery tabs, followed by the tape 
on the display flex cable. Remove this blue plastic film from the top of the flexors and reinstall the battery into place. Fold over those battery tabs once you're happy with its final position. Let's reinstall the sub board now. I'll remove this masking tape protecting the sub to main flex cable, then carefully place down the sub board for this device. It does clip into place here and here. One of the tabs has gone in okay, but the other one just needed a little bit of pushing down with the back of the spudger. I can now begin realigning the coaxial cable into place using the plastic spudger again. And there is a groove that it just sits in as well as some little metal clips that secure in on the side of the chassis. With that in place now, we can reattach the sub to main flex cable, ensuring that it clicks into place. We can now reinstall the loudspeaker and the plastic cover for the sub board, which also clicks into place. Once the shield's into position, reinstall the 11 black crosshead screws. We can now move back to the top of the chassis, begin preparing this area by removing any tapes or plastic films, as well as slightly bending back the flex cables for the battery and the screen flex, ready to receive the motherboard in place. Reinstall that small speaker at the top center, followed by the flex cable for the volume buttons and small microphone. If you line up the microphone first, the rest of the flex will follow in alignment. This chassis is now prepared for the logic board to be reinstalled. There are some small clips on this one. Just apply pressure to this right hand edge and also the left hand edge. Before securing it down, make sure that the front camera is in its position as well as the rear facing camera. Reconnect the two flexors for the screen, ensuring that they're clipped securely into place. You can now re-secure the five wide-headed crosshead screws. Followed by reconnecting the battery connector to return power to this logic board. We can now reinstall this final shield and secure it down with the six black crosshead screws. The final thing to reconnect now is this small coaxial cable. Line it up using the tweezers and then apply pressure to reconnect it. Ensure that it's sat correctly in the small groove and this is now ready to reinstall the back cover. To reinstall the back cover, simply lay it on top of the device and apply pressure around all four edges until it clicks into place. Double check to make sure there's no gap between the screen bezel and the back cover. Then finally, reinstall the SIM and memory card tray. We can now boot the device to make sure that it's fully functional and remove the screen protector. Most important things to check are that it's charging, making sounds, the buttons and cameras work, as well as no dead pixels and touch across the whole display. Thank you for watching and see you next time.